If you've ever played Kerbal Space Program before, and I'm just going to go out on a wild limb here and assume that you have, you're probably familiar with this title screen, showing a Kerbal on the Mun in front of a crashed lander with the words Moon or Bust scrawled on the side. So I got thinking, is this a real place we can visit in the game? Obviously, sounds the rocket of course. I was kind of inspired by those Minecraft videos looking for the seeds containing famous landmarks like the Texture Pack default logo, so I decided to embark on an epic journey to find this location. But first, I asked Harvester, the creator of KSP, just to double check that it is indeed a real location. And uh, it, it's not. It's, it's just a fake set rendered exclusively for the title screen. It's not taken from a real location on the Mun. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining my Patreon so I can continue making- Okay, 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 okay. So while you can't actually visit this place in KSP1, you can visit it in KSP2, because the Four Science update added the moon or bust scene as a discoverable Easter egg. So let's go there today. I thought I'd design my Mun Lander to be as faithful a recreation to the ill-fated Moon or Bust Mun Lander as I possibly could, which meant medium-sized capsule with what I assume would be a parachute on top and of course a decoupler below, followed by an appropriately long fuel tank and the Poodle engine, which unfortunately has been redesigned in the years following the creation of the Moon or Bust title screen. It's now got two engine nozzles and it's a bit shorter than it was before, but it's still the Poodle, so it's what we're going to use. We also have the big landing legs to brace our touchdown, and for the rest of the rocket, it's a fairly uncomplicated direct ascent Mun rocket. I just slapped some medium diameter tanks together with a skipper engine to power the second stage, which will get us to Kerbin orbit and partway to the Mun, and a beefy mainsail powered first stage to begin our journey from the surface of Kerbin. As for the paint scheme, I of course had to make the first stage fuel tank orange, and for the upper stage, I tried to match the paint job to the paint job scene in the moon or bust lander. So I had to get creative by painting the heat shield and the coupler yellow and black to mimic that yellow and black caution stripe colour uh, that was seen on the old style decoupler parts. But with that all said, there isn't a whole lot more to discuss. I just added some lights, a ladder, and of course some launch clamps to the stack to keep it stable on the launch pad. And um, with all of that out of the way, I guess it's time to crossfade across to the launch pad and get ready to launch. It's a beautiful thing to watch a rocket launch in Kerbal Space Program 2, and I guess it's a beautiful thing to hear a rocket launch in KSP 2 as well. I can never overstate how much I love the sound design of the engines. Well, for everything, quite frankly, in this game. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's not a particularly overstated rocket, right? It's fairly small. Ironically, uh, I often find that when I'm designing direct ascent MUN rockets, they actually end up smaller than my Apollo-style MUN rockets, because you know, the MUN is much easier to reach the surface of in Kerbal Space Program than it is in real life due to the, the scale of the planets and celestial bodies and whatnot. So although it might look deceptively small, uh, this rocket can indeed get to and from the surface of the Mun and return us safely back to Kerbin. Just, the, the Delta V is quite close, but obviously I wouldn't be uploading this video if, uh, you know, it didn't work. Or maybe that's like the whole thing, is that we're visiting the site of a crashed Mun lander that obviously left its Kerbals presumably stranded on the surface of the Mun, and it's like, it rhymes. You know, we're, we're going to do the same, but that would also suck so we're not going to do that we will be indeed returning uh, who do we even have with us we have tim c kerman bob kerman and of course jebediah kerman as you can see we've dumped the first stage and we are on our way to space we are above the kerman line or kerman line whatever the canon name for the border of the atmosphere and space in Kerbal space program 2 is uh, but yep we have now we've now crossed whatever that line is called and we can get ready to form our circularization burner as you can see we've only got 744 meters per second remaining in this stage which means that uh, obviously we've got enough to circularize at Kerbin but we haven't got enough to reach the Mun but we do need to use the fuel in this stage we've not got enough fuel in the next stage to get from low Kerbin orbits to the Mun so we're gonna have to dump this in like into not into planetary space but in deep space like we're gonna start our Mun insertion burn and then we're gonna have to stage kind of halfway through so unfortunately we do leave a bit of space debris in space for this mission but I don't really mind that much at the moment because unlike when I played Kerbal Space Program 1 for KSP2 um, I generally just make a new save every single time I do 
do a new mission just so that the performance doesn't get too impacted. I don't know if this is still the case. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know if you play the game um, as intended, where you just play on one save file for every mission. Um, but I found that, like, at least in the early days, that the kind of the more missions you launched and then did, the game would run slower and slower, and it just makes more sense because I'm making standalone videos, right? To uh, make a new save file every single time. So, yeah, is that dumb? Do I need to be doing that? Let me know in the comments below. I mean, hopefully, you know, it's um, I do still need to do it so that I can justify leaving spent stages floating aimlessly in space, never to be recovered. Uh, but also, you know, maybe it'd be quite nice to be able to build upon infrastructure I've placed in previous videos. So yeah, there you go. There's the, there's a thing for the commenters to let me know as of course we coast our way to the Mun entering its sphere of influence and then we can begin our circularization burn. Now I'm not going to be capturing into low Mun orbit because I'm not quite sure what inclination we need to be on in order to encounter the Mun or bus landing sites. I'm going to just capture here so that we can do any normal and anti-normal changes at a very high Mun apoapsis because it's much cheaper to change your inclination in high at high points in your orbit rather than close to the surface of the planets or moons. Here we are in the tracking station. I'm going to cut away to this PNG file because this is what I'm looking for. We're looking at this Mun Mary here, this like weird donut shaped one. That's our point of reference. In case it wasn't obvious, I took this screenshot whilst landed at the Mun or bus landing sites. That little capsule, that's where we're aiming for. There's not really that many visual indicators around it though, aside from that big Mun Mary, but if we zoom in, we can see some craters. It's a little bit easier to see than if I increase the contrast of the image, and the crater formations I use as my point of reference are the two pairs of craters, one above, one below the landing site. So getting rid of those visual guides again and bumping the contrast back to normal levels, that's what I had to work with. And so with that, let's crossfade back to the tracking station gameplay. I'm going to initiate some time warp and look for that weird donut shaped Mun Mary. There it is. It is now on the daylight side of the Mun and therefore the Mun or bus landing site or crash site rather is on the daylight side of the Mun. So we can go back to the gameplay screen and uh, try and land at that spot. So I'm going to put it on screen, that little target crater formation that I highlighted earlier. That's what I was aiming for. I have two monitors because you know I'm an epic gamer and all that so my main monitor was showing well you can see what was on my main monitor the gameplay of Kerbal Space Program 2 and my other monitor I had a screenshot of the um, well, the screenshot I showcased uh, earlier in the video although I didn't have all the photoshopped guidelines I only thought to do that kind of after I started editing so you guys uh, you guys got a better visual guide than I had for myself so how about if that's not worthy of a like and a subscribe I do not know what is anyway Let's just continue. So as you can see, I'm just sort of playing around with the maneuver planner, trying to get myself on a trajectory that pretty much lands me at our target spot. But it's difficult because obviously we're still far away from the Mun, and so it's going to take us a while to descend down to its surface. And during that time, the Mun is going to rotate. So it's kind of like trying to strike that balance of uh, doing the maneuver plans as far away from the Mun as possible to minimize the amount of Delta V expenditure, but also, you know, having to factor in the take into account, I should say, the fact that the man is going to rotate. So I sort of had to be a bit, there was a bit of trial and error. There was a, there may, there may, there may have been, I'm not going to deny, there may have been some quick saving and quick loading involved <laughs> when things didn't quite work out the first time around. But I think, you know, looking at the screen, it's, it's really, I think, I think this is easily one of the hardest Easter eggs to find without, you know, the, the, I guess the in-game story mission that puts the yellow marker on the map because there aren't really any clear visual indicators nearby aside from those very faint crater outlines but you know we are getting nice and close and i'm just squinting at the screen we're back on the map screen now i was gonna say i was just squinting at the screen see if i could see it but you can see kind of you know the target location box on the left and you know what's on screen you can see we are getting there we are lining up now the monobus crash site itself is in its own very small, but luckily visually, very visually distinct crater. It's that really small crater that's currently kind of in the plume of our engine burning. So that, that's that's the crater we're aiming for there. So I can't quite see the monobus crash site yet. Let's just, uh, we can fade away that target location because at this point, well, it's kind of on you if you can't see it at this point. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, I can see a dot, a speck, if you will, in the middle of this crater. I do believe 
That is the spot there. We are kind of getting close with Delta V. We're now under a thousand meters per second of Delta V. And as a general rule of thumb, I don't like to land on the Mun with less than a thousand meters per second of Delta V if we're doing direct ascent, because that's about how much it costs to get back home. Although I do uh, factor in a little bit of wiggle room so we have some spare, just in case any kind of things happen that you didn't weren't planning for. So it might be a bit tight, our fuel budget on the way back. Maybe we will get stranded. Who knows? We won't. Don't worry. Uh, but here, look, this, this is a stranded lander. And look, there's a little sand castle as well. And the reason for this, I don't know if you know this or played KSP1 very much, but basically there was a small chance that on the moon or bus landing screen, or I should say moon or bus, right, because the U has a little umlaut, uh, in it, oh, in the word man uh, or moon, uh, there was a small chance that a little sand castle or moon castle, man castle, man dust castle, I've said every variation now, uh, would spawn next to the Kerbal. So this is like a little tribute to that Easter egg that would occasionally show up. And I thought, you know what? we we got to plant a flag for the castle. I mean, it's going to be a very oversized flag, right? Because it's a real, it's a real Kerbal scale flag. <laughs> so it's going to be very, very big for the castle itself, but I thought it'd be kind of cute anyway. So let's see if we can get it. Go on, is that Jeb that's <laughs> planting the flag? There we are. It's still that weird glitch where the KSP flag has defaulted back to the default KSP flag. It's a really annoying bug, and I don't understand how or why it even happens, but let's just get too negative here. <laughs> uh, so we can just cra grab a uh, sample, I was about to say stool sample for some reason, that's disgusting. A surface sample from this area, which of course counts as its own biome. Like, as you can see, we are landed at the Mun or Bus landing site. So it is its own little science area, so maybe you get a few more science points than you would from a standard location on the Mun. Either way, let's get the beauty shots. There's our not busted lander there, and of course next to the busted lander. Uh, one of the couples there, a bit bored by the by the sight, things by the looks of things. We're having a bit of a yawn. Uh, yeah, that's uh, oh, well, I think we've uh, I think we've achieved everything that we set out to achieve. So let's get them back on board the ship. But yeah, have you been to any of the Easter eggs, monoliths, monuments, whatever they're called now in KSP2 since the Four Science update came out? Which one has been your favourite? I've visited quite a few, which I, th I don't think people like having them named if you've not encountered them yet, so I won't name any. Uh, I do like this one though. This is definitely one of the coolest ones. I guess the Golden Monarch isn't a spoiler because it's been featured in all the promotional material at this stage. So I, I do like the Golden Monarch and it's one of the first ones you find out about in KSP2's Exploration Mode mission playthrough. So yeah, I don't, I don't even know if there is a mission specific to the Mun or Bus landing site. It would be weird if there was. I feel like it's more just one of those like Easter eggs that's going to be hard to find, but it's a tribute for like hardcore players to appreciate. Well, I guess normal players to appreciate, but only the crazies will actually try and get there because it's very, very difficult to pinpoint the spot based on the sparse number of geolog or distinct geological features nearby. Uh, so yeah, there probably isn't a mission. I don't know, maybe there is. I haven't played that far. I'm, where I am in my exploration mode playthrough for beginners, that's where I've played myself. I haven't played any further yet. So when I'm playing those videos, I actually am learning how the story progresses along with all of you, because isn't that just a fun old prospect? Uh, now, I decided to make a maneuver plan and completely overcooked the prograde, and I was like, you know what, let's just execute it, and I'll just cut the throttle before we're on, like, like before our Kerbal, uh, Kerbin periapsis <laughs> disappears, we're not on an impact course, because that would be a pretty steep re-entry, right? We're going to be coming in very, very hot and fast, and the G-forces the Kerbals are going to get subjected to are going to be very high, but then I kind of overcooked it even more. So we're coming in on a very steep, uh, trajectory, but you know what? It's fine. We're only coming from the month. It's not going to be all that fast. So let's time warp down and begin our re-entry. Danger style by the looks of things, because I had tin decouple the lower stage until we are well on our way through the atmosphere. And we had you know, a couple of flickers of the temperature gauges, but otherwise a fairly safe and nominal Kerbal Space Program 2 re-entry. I don't know why I had to specify Kerbal Space Program 2 re-entry just then, but, you know, I did. I said what I said. What can I say? And there goes the parachute now. So, and oh, there you go. Now it's fully opened. Let's just speed the footage up a bit until we get to our splashdown, which is going to be... It's very hard to see. I'm trying to see on the screen where the C is, because it's... Oh, well, there, there it is. There's the splashdown. And let's crossfade to the day so we can just have a look at the capsule in the daylight. Splashdown beautifully. 
But with that, that's the end of the video. So yeah, kind of a kind of a short and sweet one. But I, I really wanted to visit this like crashed moon, moon landing site uh, ever since I found out it was going to be in the game from those four science update trailers. So uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that I've now done that. And I hope you enjoyed the ride. If you want to support what I do here, then the ride have our Patreon and YouTube channel member page. Uh, you can join like the names on the left here. There's two videos on screen from my channel that YouTube thinks you'll like. Hopefully they're good picks. And that's it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.